Why buy a new townhouse in a subdivision when you can buy the whole thing? The obvious answers might pop up. The cost, the regulatory process, I don't know where to start. Or I don't know what the process is to take a project like this through to completion. It's okay, unless you've done a project like this before, you're not supposed to have the answers. In this video, I'll break down the five step process to buying a subdivision. Stick around to the end of the video where I'll share the numbers on one of our projects, a 205 unit subdivision, and show you the potential profits you can make if you were to do it too. Hey, what's up? Darren Voros here. My mission is to help a thousand people create a million dollars in net worth with real estate investing. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. There are three main types of land development. The first is to take a raw piece of land like agricultural or vacant land and convert that land to something that can be used for residential purposes. The second type of land development is a land assembly where you buy up multiple lots and create one large lot by combining all of the smaller lots. And the third type is a conversion taking an existing building and converting it to something else or adding to it to create more density. The 205 units we purchased fall under the first category of raw land that will be developed to create the subdivision. Let me walk you through the process of how this works. Step one is to find and identify a potential site. This can be done through your realtors or by any other means that you find your properties as a real estate investor. We've found some of our projects off market that sellers have brought to us directly, but the majority of our land development projects have been brought to us through our realtors. These are not on the market, but that doesn't mean you can't find them through a realtor. The difference is that most transactions of this nature only have one realtor involved. A seller will connect with a realtor when they have an opportunity they are looking to liquidate and that realtor will turn to their group of contacts that they know are looking for a project that fits that criteria and they will work to put the deal together between the two parties. So why wouldn't the realtor take that to the open market and try to escalate the price? Because there are fewer buyers who could take on this opportunity and who can actually have the funds or resources to pull it off. In other words, they don't wanna waste their time with potential tire kickers. Plus, if a realtor brings a buyer and a seller to the table on one transaction, they make twice as much money because they get to double end the sale. In other words, they make commission on the buying and the selling side. So this is a win-win scenario. This is great for you as the buyer because you're not competing with anybody else and it's great for the realtor because they get to double end the sale. Win-win. Step two is to put the property under contract. Make an offer. What, without running any of your numbers or looking into the opportunity further? No, make an offer, get the property tied up, and then do your due diligence. To be clear, we're not making a firm offer. That's just crazy. We have conditions on the offer, such as the offer being subject to a due diligence period, financing, verification of all documents, and a review by your legal team. This now gives you the time to figure out if this is a viable transaction, but the first step should always be to agree on the initial price and the terms and get the property off the market while you do so. The risk of doing your due diligence first instead of putting the property under contract is that the seller can still entertain other offers and may use the fact that you are interested as a bargaining chip to other interested parties to try and spark a bidding war. Depending on what province or state you are in, you may be required to submit a refundable deposit at this point, but if your conditions aren't satisfied, you will get that money given back to you if you don't end up moving forward on the deal. Now that you have the property under contract, you can move to the next step. Step three is due diligence. It's time to put on your detective hat and work through all of the elements of the transaction that need to be verified. Developments can be picked up at various stages of the project. You can buy it at the raw land stage, after draft plan approval, after master plan approval, or following site plan approval prior to getting your building permits. We purchased our project at the raw land stage, but our offer is conditional on the seller delivering us draft plan approval. They have already started the process with the local municipal planning department. The sellers have hired a consulting firm who is very familiar with this kind of project. There are all kinds of reports and studies that need to be done to submit to the planning department for review. It's our job as the potential new owners to verify with the seller's consulting team what reports have been submitted, what's outstanding, and where the project is in the timeline. It's also important for us to get an opinion from the consultants and the municipal planning department as to the probability of this plan actually getting approved. Even though our offer is subject to the seller delivering draft plan approval, we don't wanna waste our time and energy on a project that doesn't have a high probability 
of having the backing of the municipal planning department and the city council. Step four is underwriting the development. Get out your calculator. Development is no different than any other real estate project that has an element of value being created. You need to ask yourself, what is the current value of the project? And are there other projects selling for similar value? What is the future value of the land if you can take it to the next stage? What that next stage is up to you. For our project, we are running the numbers on getting this project through site plan approval and ready to build. From there, we could sell the lots and exit. It doesn't mean we have to exit at this point, but we can decide the next stage once we get closer to that point. The final element to being able to put your numbers together is what the cost of getting from where the project is now to where you wanna go. If we were to compare this process to that of a flip, you'd be looking at what you're buying the property for, what the renovation will cost, and what you can sell the property for when you're done renovating. Land development is the same, except there is no property on the lot yet. Let's break down some basic numbers on this property we just purchased. We are buying the land for approximately $3 million. So our cost of acquisition is about $14,634 per lot. We simply take $3 million and divide that by the 205 units. We still need to go through some regulatory process with the planning department, so we'll need to allocate costs for planners, consultants, engineers, and architects. So we have to figure out what it's going to cost for the consultants and the engineers. Let's say that we need to pay an additional $500,000 in consulting fees. That would bring our total to get to our next sellable stage to $3.5 million. Once we know this number, now we can find out if we're in the ballpark. We would now be trying to find a similar comparable sale, perhaps a project that's sold with a similar number of lots in proximity to our site. It just so happens that we have a very good direct comp. A similar subdivision within 50 kilometers of our site just sold for $5.1 million and there were 116 lots on this site. So we take the $5.1 million and divide by 116 units and we know that our completed value is close to $44,000 per lot. We will have about $17,000 into our lots when we're at the same stage that the current sellers sold their project for. So to figure out our profit, we take our $44,000, subtract that from the $17,000, that we will have into the project per lot and we're left with $27,000 in profit. We then take our $27,000 in profit per lot and we multiply that by 205. I'll let you do the math to figure out the potential profit. Drop your answers in the comments section below. Before we get to step five, I wanted to let you know that we run a course that teaches this entire process from beginning to end. It's a three-day intensive where we break down all of the elements of our various development projects and by the end of the course, you'll have the necessary information to look at taking on a similar project. For our upcoming course dates and more information, you can visit readydevelopments.ca. Use the promo code YouTube for $500 off. Step five is to come up with an execution plan. First off, where is the money coming from? Are we bringing investors in? If so, are we bringing in equity partners or debt partners? What kind of legal structure are we going to be working under? What are the potential accounting and tax considerations? What is the timeline for a project like this? Who will be managing managing the various elements of the project, and of course, what are the risks if something goes wrong. As you can imagine, creating an execution plan can take some time and it's ever changing, but it's a very important step in a development of this size and scope. But as you can see, in many ways, development is not that different from any other kind of real estate investing transaction. It's just that the numbers are bigger, but so are the potential profits. If you have questions about land development or any other real estate investing questions, feel free to leave those in the comments section below. If you haven't had a chance to check out my free mini masterclass, check it out at darrenvoros.com. You can follow along on our various projects on my Instagram and Facebook accounts. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next Tuesday.